a lot of people are going nuts over these two uh but like whenever it came out and even holding them it really makes me want to think it's the same shit the same shit it's the same shit <laughs> the same shit john here guys and today we're talking about the radio master t16s finally i have it in my hands and I'm gonna tell you all of the juicy details on whether or not this is the radio that you should have. And I know what you're thinking, John, didn't you just tell us to buy the Jumper T16 and Pro? Yes, yes, uh, I mean, but these are like almost the same thing. I mean, you know, they're the same, but different, but mostly the same. And if you're thinking this is a clone, think again, it is not a clone. There was a company that was working on coming out with the T16, but the two companies split through some sort of corporate uh, argument going on. And so each party's retained the rights to be able to manufacture this T16 radio. That's why you have the T16 Pro and the T16S. Uh, so this is not a clone. It's much more uh, just kind of a reshell or rebadge. It's kind of like the difference between a Toyota FRS and a Subaru BRZ. So right away you can tell that this has a black exterior. Um, and a lot of the product picks originally it was all black but they did make a few of these things silver i really don't like that i wish it was just totally murdered out and totally black um this does have a slightly longer gimbal throw slightly longer gimbal throw this has the switches in slightly different positions so i've heard i don't really notice that much they feel exactly the same to me this comes um, with a version of OpenTX that is crossfire ready. Mine did not, I had to flash a newer version. I think that the ones that are shipping now with the USB-C probably do, so that's probably a non-issue. Uh, one of the bigger points of contention is the thickness. If you can see, this one's a little bit thicker because it has bigger hand grips. This is a little bit of a soft touch rubbery plastic, which I like, it is supple and smooth. This, is ridged so it actually looks a little bit cooler but it is and it's soft but i feel like you might build up a little sweat i feel like it might be a little slick here i'm not really sure but the grip itself is fantastic you really get an extra amount of superior purchase when you pick up this thing your grip is not going to move and what i noticed when i started flying with this thing is that your index finger if you're a pincher naturally goes in this little slot right here above the grip oh my gosh that felt so good i never thought to really want that so at first i was really miffed about the extra thickness here but i don't think it's going to be an issue long term the grip really is good I like that it was able to set up. I just set up my switches in a couple of minutes. I don't like these pokey stickies that come with it. They're really a pain in the butt. I'd much rather have my honey stick in, so I will probably switch those over if I decide to use this over this. So here's the bottom line. If you have the latest jumper, um, stick with the jumper. There's not really any meaningful um, reason to go there unless you want the slightly larger gimbals. I will tell you that I'm quite used to the shorter throw in the Jumper T16, although it's minorly shorter. It's very infinitesimally small distance shorter, uh, but I did feel it. Um, I felt unfamiliar when I was flying this thing. I would not want to race with it. I would, um, even though these radios look alike, they feel different. And so I would give myself a full 20, 30, 40 packs to transition to this radio if I decide to do that. So if you have a jumper, I suggest you stick with it. Well, what if I don't have the USB-C charging? You can add it, it's $399. I'll leave a link for the be below. I've actually bought it, haven't installed it yet. Uh, the looks are subjective. Which one do you think looks more like something you would find at the Dollar General? That's debatable. I think both of these are quite ugly but anything that is not 
FR Sky is quite beautiful though. I think we can all agree. Because of their scummy ways, we're all abandoning them. And the notable thing is, it seems like less and less folks are carrying the T16 now. Jumper seems to be moving on to the T18, which we'll have on the channel very soon. Um, so now you're really comparing, this was going to be like a mid-range offering. The Jumper T16 Pro was about 160 bucks now. The new one, the T18 is coming in at 190 bucks if you want the super, super Anthony Michael Hall sensor gimbals. This one comes in at a low, low budget price of only $129.99, $129.99. And if you are not married to the idea of having Hall sensor gimbals, you can actually get it a little bit cheaper at only $99.99. $99.99. That's all you would pay for this radio right here. Now, lights on. This actually has these really cool amber lamps up here. Uh, and I actually like that a lot. It reminds me a lot of my Honda days. Anytime you had like a Civic Si or an Integra Type R, you always had like these amber lights on the dash. That let you know you were in a sporty version. So I do like that. Uh, a lot of people will say, but this has a touchscreen, John. This has a touchscreen. Isn't that really cool? Uh, I could care absolutely less than zero about having a touchscreen on my radio. It feels far less useful than one of the most useless um, <laughs> uses of a touchscreen I can think of was, was when they started putting touchscreens on refrigerators. That was completely useless. I can't think of any use for this. This is about the same usefulness as having a touchscreen on my garden hose. Because after I set up my switches and set up my radio, I really don't touch it at all, except to change models from Crossfire over to FR Sky if I'm flying some whoops or something. So I really don't care about a touchscreen. I'm never gonna use it. It doesn't come shipped with the ability to use it anyway. It's not gonna be for a future update, so who really cares? Um, I'm actually a little concerned about having a touchscreen because what if I was flying uh, under some cover of trees? It's about to be summer, it's gonna be quite hot outside. A leaf falls from above you and lands on the touchscreen and changes something that allows you to crash. Now that's probably unlikely, but still I would worry about accidental inputs to the touchscreen, if anything else. So that is not a bonus to me. Let's go to the bench for a few other notes. So here it is. You read that it came with a case and it kind of does. This is like a foam clamshell thingy. It does give you a cool experience when you open it up. It feels like opening the case from Pulp Fiction. Ooh. Vincent. Be happy. Yeah, we happy. But you know what doesn't fit in there? Your crossfire module. Your crossfire module does not fit in there if you use this. So I probably won't ever use this again, but at least it kept it safe in shipping. It comes with a USB-C cable. Can never have too many of those. Thank you. And it also comes with this little keychain version of the Radiomaster T16S, not to be outdone by the TBS Tango 2, which also came with a similar thing, and it is similarly sized much larger than Tango 2. So if you had both of those, you could have the ultimate keychain collection. Let's throw that to the side for now and talk about the few detailed differences between the two of these models. Um, of course, you can see right away that this Antenna on the jumper is a lot shorter. Um, I kind of like that because it's less in the way when you're carting it around. I'm not sure if I like the longer one on there. Uh, I mean, I don't have any sort of uh, insecurities where I need this longer antenna. Uh, it doesn't do anything good. Now, in a lot of the pictures, this looks like a cheap chrome. The same way that this is a cheap chrome, it is not. It is more of a brushed aluminum finish. Uh, which I actually like. It does look a little bit classier than the bargain basement looks of the jumper, which copied its from its looks from the hideously ugly Futaba. Anyway, um, I'm not a fan of the looks of any of those radios. The charging port and the SD card, which it does come shipped with one, is on the bottom. Quite nice. Uh, the jumper has nothing on the bottom. Oh, bottom envy. <laughs> but all of those things for the jumper are on the top. Now look at this old connector, but I do have the, like I said, the one new one that you can put in for $399. And the SD card for this one is actually in here. 
Uh, the center sections are different. The lights are a little bit different colors. I said it's white on the jumper. Um, that color over there. Now this has a second port up top, also USB-C, and that allows you to sim without having the cable stick into your stomach, um, which is awesome, which is awesome. Now let's see, let's do a test of the gimbal travel. All the way here, all the way center. You see, it's a little farther. But it's farther enough, if I'm used to this, this is gonna throw me off and it felt a little bit weird flying. Not that you won't get used to it, you will. If you're used to flying a full-size X9D, you may definitely wanna go to this full-size gimbal versus this. I think for my size hands, I do prefer this size. Um, but as I said, now this has three buttons here. This has four buttons here. The jog wheel on this is a million times more accurate and better. The wheel on this, this is like a knurled aluminum thing in here and it is like, it doesn't have the, the stupid ratchety, <laughs> ratchet, look at this ratchetness. It doesn't have that. This works so good, it is a pleasure to use. <laughs> I mean, um, but the buttons are weird. Like I like the button layout of this return. I was, I was very used to having return up here. Now models over here. Why would you have system on both here? You're going to use return far more. So return should be here. Um, cheap usability 101 for you guys. Come on radio master. I do like that they added, um, page forward and page back button. That is very, very useful. Return is over here, which I always seem to have to hunt for it. But like I said, you're not going to be using these model, these buttons too much, uh, except for changing models. So maybe that's where they're going with, okay, maybe I shouldn't you know, put them down too hard. So what do you think guys? Are you going to be getting the jumper T16? Uh, are you going to get the Jumper T18 Pro or are you going to get the Radio Master T16S? This is a great model. I suggest this is my new recommendation for all beginners of the hobby because of the low price, because of all the features, because it does everything you need to and more with the all multi pro multi protocol module the multi protocol module five way of the t18 really is a little bit of overkill so most people can save those 50 bucks and get this bad boy and although it doesn't look quite as good as the product pictures it actually looks pretty 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 good pretty 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 good